Welcome to another episode of mother to son cooking.com. Tonight I'm going to do uh, one of my favorites. This is the beer can chicken. Not much to this, at least the way I make it. Uh, we have a whole chicken. Uh, it's been defrosted fully. That's kind of important. We have a, this little uh, chicken sitter. There's many different types of them, but um, this is the one that I use. Uh, traditionally, a beer can chicken is made on a beer can, which makes sense. But um, since I'm doing it this way, I'm just using one of these little small mason jars. There's the beer that I'm going to use. Uh, you can use any type of beer. It doesn't really matter. Uh, apple juice works. Water works. Really any type of liquid. And then uh, one of my personal favorites is the Fiesta chicken rub. Um, you can make your own chicken rub. I, I do it different pretty much every time I do it. You just make it to your own taste. But um, this is basically all you need to make a beer can chicken. Okay, so this is what the chicken looks like after I've uh, put the oil on it and then put the spice on it. Um, if I didn't mention it before, it's important to have the chicken real dry before you put the oil on it. It just sticks better and tastes better in the long run. Um, what I have here, I made a small incision in the chicken and then uh, put a temperature gauge inside of it. It just helps me. It's something I've learned. I used to cook just on time alone on the grill and I've learned that um, it's best to actually use one of these temperature gauges. I have um, like one of these remote things that uh, wirelessly connects to, per USDA recommendations it says cook to about 165 I usually cook it at 170 just because um, my wife makes likes to make sure the chicken's done it it is well but um, if you time it it doesn't it, it's a guessing game if you use the internal thermometer it's less of a guessing game and it comes out just right it's really important not to undercook it of course and then if you overcook it it won't be as a uh, as moist as it should be. So, uh, this chicken's cold because I just bought it today. Um, I think the temperature is uh, 59 degrees. So, I'll put it on the grill, set up my remote. Um, it's going to cook on the grill somewhere around 350 degrees on the grill. And then uh, I'm going to cook it internally to 170 and I'll be able to check it as it goes. I'll do probably one update halfway in. Okay, so I have the chicken on the grill. I got the grill started earlier, as you saw. Um, I've got my two thermometer synced if you can see that the one on the left is hooked in through the thermometer into the chicken and says 61 the one on the right is wireless it says 61 so that way I can sit inside and watch a Spurs game and uh, I'll know when it's done um, you can see the one side of the grill it has heat under it and the other side is indirect um, the way I'm gonna do this is that I've got the thermometer side uh, that I put into the chicken closer to the fire to start and then that way, uh, when I turn this halfway through, I suspect it'll be about an hour and a half to cook it. Um, so 45 minutes in, I'll go ahead and turn the chicken. That way the thermometer will be facing outward. And I'll, I, I would hope to get a truer temperature in the end. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this one down. And we'll uh, let it go and watch the Spurs game. We'll be back probably in about 45 minutes just to show you midway through the process how it is. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we're about halfway in. Uh, we're cooking to 170 tonight. Um, I don't know if you can read that, but it says 118. So I figure the chicken went from 60, and we're taking it to 170, so we're about halfway through. Also, look at the chicken just to see if the uh, skin has been brown on one side. Um, so let's go ahead and open it up and look. Sorry if these uh, locusts are loud. They're all rooting for the spurs. Um... This is what the chicken looks like, so I'll give you a couple different angles at it. This side is cooked a little bit more than the other, as you'd expect, because it's closer to the fire. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that around. Um, so it's halfway through the cooking process, and uh, we'll cook it at 170 and take it off. Okay, so we, uh, we're we there. 171 degrees, that's what we're cooking at 170. Uh, the grill's been cooking at 350 the entire time. Um, this is why the temperature is important, number one. Um, it looks pretty done to me, but I got to tell you, as ex inexperienced as I am with cooking, and with that said, as many of the chickens that I've cooked, um, normally I'd cook this longer if I was just looking at it, but that temperature, it really shows us that it's done, and that's what's important. I cut this chicken as I think that you should, and the, the whole point is, is that the, when the chicken comes apart, it should be fairly easy to come apart. If it feels wrong, it probably is wrong. So I'm just going to cut this, this piece off here. You want to preserve the skin. So that's what, the, what it looks like there. I'm going to take the wing off next. Again, I'm just trying to find where the um, 
meets the joint, you can see all the, the juice that comes out. That can tell you basically that it's cooked right, or at least, you know, the way we cook beer can chicken. All I'm trying to do now is just trying to cut up the chicken and find the loosest part of the joints and cut it so it's just how you want to eat it. There it is. So you had to find the right spot for a minute there. So that's what the chicken looks like. I'm going to do the wing next on, which is the, the other wing. We've already cut one off. Again, cooked well. And so then when we cut the chicken, we're going to save the breast for the last part to cut through. The, this part of the chicken kind of gets separated, and I just did that just with my own hand. Um, these are the two back parts of the chicken. So I'm going to cut that out of the, the main part of the cavity. That comes there. There's a lot that you can take out of this back piece, and it's good, uh, but it won't be a main piece that I serve. And then uh, the skin's always good, it's not overdone. So now we basically have the breast left, um, which is also still part of the cavity. So I'll just kind of take the rest of the cavity off. I'm just trying to find the sweet spots here. The rest of this chicken is good and you should eat it, but um, when it comes to serving the food and making it look nice, that looks a little bit nicer than the rest of the cavity does. So I'll take the rest of that chicken off but I won't do it as part of my serving dish. And then I'm just gonna cut this breast in half. If you can't tell, the chicken is really moist, which is good and is what we want. And so that's basically the part of the beer can chicken that is really nice to serve. It looks really good for the folks that wanna come sit at the table. Okay, so here's the finished product. This is beer can chicken and how it comes out. It's real moist. Um, it's important that you use that temperature gauge and or uh, you know, remote thermometer because if you don't, uh, you might get it right, but it's a whole lot easier if you do. Hope you enjoy this.